Hey folks, Jeremy McGowan here. And as promised, this is the first video in a short series on the Osiris specifically and what it took to put it all together. I know that a lot of you guys were asking me for some step-by-step -step instructions. Unfortunately, I can't do that. Uh, except when it comes to the actual sky hub or the other sensor stacks that I have. But what I am going to do is I'm going to break this down into three, maybe four separate videos. The first one is today and it's going to take you through the vehicle, the modifications, the implementation of the sensor stacks and what each sensor stack does and how it's incorporated to the vehicle. So now this is a 22 year old Land Rover Discovery 2. So let's take a quick look at the exterior of this vehicle. This is from Dan Zetterman, or the Zignal. He worked his butt off in creating a good logo for this. And as you can see here, the OSIRIS stands for Off-Road Scientific Investigation and Response Informatics System, the OSIRIS. And there is a lot of symbolism and a lot of synchronicity in this logo all the way down to the fact, I don't know if you can see it too well, but the, uh, the star field that is in the back there, that is the star field exactly as it was over, uh, over Dan's house on the day or the night that he finished designing the logo. And as you can see up here, I've got everything is currently hooked up to the vehicle. But let's take a quick look at the front of the vehicle and I'll tell you what we've got going on. Right off the bat, right here, we're working with a 9,500 pound uh, capacity winch. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot in the world of winches, but I have mechanical advantage pulleys, uh, snatch blocks and things like that in the back that will take the, uh, the mechanical towing capacity of this winch up to 15,000 pounds. So I can lift a, uh, a lot of stuff with this. This is primarily just to get me unstuck because even though this is a very, very capable vehicle, this thing weighs over 5,000 pounds. And in the muck, the mud, and very loose sand, it tends to sink. So as long as I have anchor points, I can pull myself out with the winch. Uh, if I can't get out with the winch, then I use a combination of this high lift jack to be able to put onto the side rails that I custom built on this thing, lift the vehicle up, and then put these Max Trax boards underneath of the tires to be able to drive out. Uh, so far, I've not used them to extricate myself, but I've pulled a few Jeeps out of the mud that, uh, that also got stuck. So this is the front of the Osiris. Now I've got uh, high intensity discharge LED lights down at the bottom just for off-road navigation. And up here at the top, I'm also sporting a really high output power LED light bar. Uh, you can see GPS antenna. Now, this light right here, this is an interesting little modification because this is designed to test one of the theories of Jacques Vallée. There's one on the driver's side and there's one on the passenger side. And basically, this light is a programmable, extreme high intensity discharged LED system, full color spectrum, that allows me to program certain colors into the light so that it, uh, it beams them straight up. Uh, the idea from Jacques Vallée is that s very specific color frequencies in certain color patterns may or may not uh, elicit a feedback or a, some sort of response from UAP. So that's one of my active tests that I'll be performing. Uh, back here on the back is my ham radio antenna. This is simply for uh, vehicle communications, long distance vehicle communications when cellular systems are not available, but I have a fully operational ham radio on the inside. Back here on the back is my obligatory fire extinguisher because when we were out in Wyoming filming with Lou Elizondo, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the clips that are floating around, but my Skyhub unit on the inside, the power supply actually caught on fire and uh, started filling up the cabin of the vehicle with, uh, with smoke and some noxious fumes. 
and it uh, took me a very long rebuild process to, uh, to get everything functioning again. Now, up here on top is where the meat and potatoes start. This is the primary 1080p fisheye camera. Uh, this camera has the ability to see in a full 360 degrees around the vehicle. Uh, the reason that that is important is because it has the ability to look from one horizon all the way to the other horizon as long as there's no physical impediments blocking the, uh, the vision of that. Now also we have this new camera up here which is also a 360 degree but it is a pan tilt zoom system and it has the ability to either go laterally from horizon to horizon or circularly from horizon to horizon with a 32 times optical zoom uh, to preserve image quality. Now obviously over here we have a fully operational weather station with the, uh, the anemometer, the wind direction, uh, we have a photovoltaic system on the back here to give us what the UV index is, we've got uh, particulate counts and we even have a uh, rain gauge on this thing and that'll come into explanation here in a little bit as I go into detail but that is basically the outside of the Osiris and sorry for the uh, the quality and the shakiness of this video but I'm filming this with a GoPro on a stick and it's hard to hold on to so all right so you took a look at the outside of the vehicle now let's hop in the back and take a look at all the equipment that I've got slammed into this vehicle all right you ready come on all right so this is primarily the uh, the brains and a little bit of the brawn of the system back here and you've got my uh, my work table but let's start off up at the top where we have a uh, a large power inverter that is powering a five port power over ethernet networking switch and then on the top we have our dual sim cellular router and inside this case which has been it was actually just a stanley toolbox that has been cut out and uh and fabricated up to house all the brains and the electronics of the sky hub vented with air being pulled in on the front and i don't know if you can see it but air being pulled out on the back uh, the current inside the case temperature in case you're wondering is 108 degrees with 14 percent humidity so we're good on the inside there now i also have a series of custom programmed uh, walkie talkies these operate on the uh, the family channels the uh, gprs channels and i can program them uh, for normal ham channels as well so i carry five of these plus an additional walkie uh, that's up in the front i have uh, rechargeable batteries for the lasers rechargeable battery packs for cellular cellular communications i've got geiger counters i've got tri-field meters and I've got a host of equipment for uh, first aid, safety, extrication, and uh, vehicle, uh, in case the vehicle gets stuck. So all of that is housed back here in the back. Now you can see that one of the reasons that I'm not doing a step-by-step -step is simply because my wiring is absolutely atrocious. This thing looks like it was built by Doc Brown. So it's, uh, it's not exactly well, it's not exactly uh, something that OSHA would probably approve of. But let's go up to the very front and take a look at the command center. Okay, welcome to the inside of the Osiris. Now, the first thing that we have right here is not really anything Osirisy, but it sure as heck helps me keep an eye on the uh, the vehicle health. This is what is called an ultra gauge that's plumbed into my uh, uh, OBD2 system and gives me a readout on all of my sensors, including gas mileage and engine temperature and things like that. So I can keep a, a good eye on the health of the, the vehicle. Now here's my little ham radio. I don't know if you can see too well the, uh, the frequencies or not, but uh, I'll be scanning through most of the known repeater frequencies when I'm on point or on station or doing an investigation, uh, just to monitor any communications that are happening in the local area 
and uh, and to give me a, a little bit of a margin of safety there. Now here is one of my touchscreen tablets. I don't know how well you can see this right now, but this is currently running the ADSB uh, information and showing me all the aircraft that are directly above my house at the moment. So we've got that. And then back here is a little shot of where we're going. But first, and here's my onboard weather station. Now, the reason that the weather station is important is because you want to have as much environmental data collected as you possibly can. We've got uh, wind gusts, the average wind speed, the dew point, uh, the wind direction. We've got uh, rain rate if it's happening, uh, the in-vehicle temperature, the UV index, and the amount of uh, sunlight, 594 watts per meter squared, uh, and our temperature barometric pressure. Now, all of these are important because you want to be able to explain to folks if temperature inversions were a potential or if there was any thunderstorms or lightning in the area or just monitor this because we don't know if UAP could actually potentially change uh, local weather environments. Now, let's take a hop back in the back seat. Okay, so welcome to the back seat of the Osiris. Now, as you can see up front, that is exactly where we just were. And now we're in the back seat. Now, to kind of explain what's going on here, what you're seeing on this screen here is a live image of that fisheye camera. What you're seeing over here is an image of the pan tilt zoom camera, the big boy that's sitting on the top. So what happens is that fisheye camera is constantly monitoring the skies above the vehicle. If it catches any movement, any object in the camera's view, it's going to trigger the pan and tilt camera and the PTZ camera is then going to track that object through the sky as we record a whole bunch of different types of data sets. Uh, so we're going to be having incorporated magnetometers to measure uh, magnetic anomalies. We're going to have barometric pressure sensors measuring uh, pressure anomalies. We're going to have EMF detectors built in. All of this is going to be synced with the GPS time and date so that the metadata is directly in line with the video. So there's not going to be any issues with the video getting uh, uh, missing data or corrupted data or anything like that. So just looking out the side of the vehicle or out the sunroof there's the big boy there's the weather station coming back through the sunroof here's our back seat control system and then the front seat with the weather station and the driver's section Thank you.